and we're going live. Uh, and I'm gonna do my usual sitting around waiting for the stream to start. All right, and there is Twitch. Uh, and now I'm waiting for YouTube. Oop, a uh, question from Nikki. Uh, do you watch or there's a way to follow along on computer? Um, I guess you could type the code as I'm typing the code, but there's not like um, uh, a simple way to do the, uh, the live coding at the same time. I don't know. Sorry, I'm just thinking about how we could do that. Maybe like a scratch pad of some kind. Um, yeah, I'll think about it. But you're, you're free to, to follow along and I will often run into bugs and need assistance. Good morning, Gare. All right, today, um, A, I figured out how to increase the video quality. Um, so I think you can now watch in up to 1080p. If I did it right, um, and also always at a lower quality, um, which will hopefully not mean some lag in the stream. So let me guys, let me know if you guys get um, like weird stuttering or stuff. Um, I've been trying to do better with video stuff. It's not really my core competency, but I'm reading a lot of tutorials and um, following along. And I do have two cups of uh, of beverage here. This one is tea and this one is coffee and they're both green. Oh my God. Okay. Well, mistakes were made. Um, it's a, it's an invisible cup. Uh, today we are going to be doing brown clusters. Um, they are named for Peter Brown and not Brown University, which was my first assumption. So um, right off the bat, I learned something. Uh, and I read this paper in preparation. I'm not expecting you guys to have, ooh, uh, to have read this paper, but there is a really nice uh, prose description of the model that I thought we could quickly read to give you guys a good uh, idea of what the clustering algorithm is doing. So, uh, hi, Daniel. Uh, Yer says merge them. Merge. Oh, merge the, the cup and the screen. Um, I mean, oh, merge the cups. I don't think I can. I think, so this one is definitely a green that is sometimes chroma key. The other one is not. Uh, all right, so the, uh, oh, and you're very welcome. I uh, did a little optimization comparing um, the stream audiences and uh, what would be a good time for people in those places. So I'm glad this works. So the basic idea is um, we know of no practical method for finding one of the partitions that maximize the average mutual information. Um, and this is mutual information between the clusters and this is a word-based clustering method. Indeed, given such a partition, we know of no practical methods for demonstrating that it does in fact maximize the average mutual information. Oh, and I've just realized I did something wrong here. One sec. All right. Oh, uh, merge the coffee and the tea, uh, I will pass. There is a drink like that that um, I had uh, in Hong Kong when I lived there a couple times and I very much enjoyed. Um, I don't remember what it's called. Oh, what's like? It's something in Cantonese and I don't speak Cantonese and I am, uh, that's one of the great um, disappointments in my life is that I never learned Chinese very well. Uh, anyway. So we have, however, obtained interesting results using a greedy algorithm. Initially, we assign each word to a distinct class. So the um, number of the vocabulary items, the number of classes are equivalent and compute the average mutual information between adjacent classes, um, adjacent in, I believe, some feature space. Oh, I actually don't need these. Uh, we then merge that pair of classes for which the loss in average mutual information is the least. So whichever ones are the, um, basically which, whichever clusters are most similar, you flump those together. After V minus C of these mergers, C classes remained. So this bit of math I don't get because it doesn't work out. So, okay, let's say we have 100 words of vocabulary and then we do 20 mergers then we should have 20 classes remaining. I would assume each merger would take two existing classes and turn them into one class, but maybe I am doing this slightly wrong. Uh, and what we're doing today is we are doing brown clustering. 
Um, so it's a unsupervised text classification, not classification, well, kind of classification, uh, text clustering technique where you take in text and it gives you uh, clusters that have um, something like semantic similarity. I'll show you some examples in a little bit so you can see uh, what the output looks like. Uh, often we find that for classes obtained in this way, the average mutual informa information can be made larger by moving some words from one class to another. Uh, so it's sort of like, um, not k-neighbors, neighbors, k-means. So it's a little bit like k-means where you're adding items to each class and then at some point you're like, hey, if I rearrange some of these items, my classes are going to be more homogenous in terms of mutual information. Uh, therefore, after having derived a set of classes from successive mergers, we cycle through vocabulary, moving each word to the class for which the resulting partition has the greatest average mutual information. Um, so we're trying to um, maximize the mutual information. And mutual information is a uh, measure of, I believe the measure, okay, let me see if I can get this off the top of my head. So I believe the measure is the joint probability divided by the probability of each item, given that there's two, and then you take the log of that. And I believe that is the mutual information measure. Pretty sure. I did read this paper relatively recently. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Eventually, no potential reassignment of a word leads to a partition with greater than average mutual information. At this point, we stop. It may be possible to find a partition with higher average mutual information by simultaneously reassigning two or more words, but we would regard such a search as too costly to be feasible. Um, so again, it's very similar to k-means in terms of a clustering algorithm, except we are doing it uh, for words. And, oh, one sec. Can I scooch this over and get rid of that little bit of white at the top? Yeah, success, excellent. Uh, sorry, that was bothering me. So the output of this is a number of clusters where the words in the clusters are very likely, are much more likely to occur together or in similar situations than they are apart. So some examples of these clusters, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Tuesdays, Saturday, Sunday, weekends, Sundays, Saturdays. Um, so these are words that emerge in the same cluster. Um, these are days of the week. And then we have months. Uh, and then we have sort of a generic <laughs> group of people um, terms that includes CEOs and commies for some reason. Um, I believe that the training data for this was transcripts from Canadian Parliament. So I guess Canadians were talking about CEOs and commies in, in the 90s. Um, Raya says, what is this channel about? Live projects. Uh, so on Friday, we do live coding, and we're going to get to the coding in just a little bit. On Wednesday, we read papers, and then we have a variety of other data science related um, things. We got interviews with folks. Um, we're going to have some new video series coming up that I'm really excited about. Uh, so a variety of things. Uh, Nicholas says, oh, when does the merging stop? The merging stops when additional mergers do not increase the mutual information. Um, so it gets to the point where it's sort of like asymptotic and then we stop at the, the elbow of the, the function. It's probably not actually a function. I mean, it is a function, but it's not like, uh, it's not something you're, you're doing analytically. You're just trying it again and seeing if it helps. And if it doesn't, then, then you call it quits. Um, we also have directional terms, um, sort of uh, looks like oil related um, terms, I guess. Um, this one is professions, director, commander, treasurer. This one is uh, parts of the body. So these are sort of um, the classes that emerge. And then we can use these classes as, we can use each class as a model and then as a model. So what I was thinking was we could use each class as a topic and then model each forum post as a mixture of topics and then use that to help summarize what each forum post is about. Or we might just take the, uh, the most likely topic from each post. Maybe. I, I need to um, play around with it. Hi, William. One sec. Whew. All right. So that is the general idea. And there was something else that I thought would be super fun for us to do if we have a little bit of extra time, or maybe even first. So there's, uh, oh, here it is. Here is the um, way that you calculate mutual information. So it's the probability of word one and word two occurring adjacently. So this is an n-gram model. So we're taking sort of a sliding um, little lens over the, uh, 
what's it called? Over the text, and then we take each of those little chunks. Um, the paper is called, it doesn't actually have brown clusters in the name, which is a little bit confusing, Class-Based Ngram Models of Natural Language, uh, and it's in the ACL anthology, so it's available online for free for anyone to read, which is really nice. It's, um, uh, the, it's the premier publication venue in natural language processing, uh, and it has been online and free for a very long time. Uh, so the probability of word one and word two occurring together divided by the probability of word one times the probability of word two, and then we take the log. I think that's what I said earlier. So good job, Rachel. Uh, Christopher says, are you drinking tea out of a coffee cup? Actually, I have a teacup and a coffee cup this morning. <laughs> Need a little bit of extra caffeine. Uh, so one of the things from this paper that just just delighted me. It was lovely. You don't get you don't get figures like this much anymore um, in, in NLP papers was this list of words that had super high word pairs that had super high mutual information. So these are words that are much, 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 much more likely to be used as a pair in this order than they are to be used individually. So Humpty Dumpty, um, Klux Klan and Ku Klux as in Ku Klux Klan, Chanulf and Nucha as in New Channel, which is a um, uh, a tribe and also I believe a language of, ooh, I want to say it's in British Columbia, but don't quote me on that. Um, I'm not, I, like I try to stay up on First Nations, but it's not, it's not an area of my expertise. Uh, Lao Bao, do not know what that is. Um, these look like names or maybe places. Avant-garde, gizzard shard. I look it up, it's a fish. Uh, I thought it might be might be a bird, but it's a fish. Um, a lot of proper names, places, uh, ammonium nitrate. So in Canadian, car in Canadian Parliament, they're not talking about ammonium separately from ammonium nitrate. Um, Helter Skelter, mumbo jumbo, fuddle duddle, etc. Uh, the answer to life. Does this clustering account for contextual words in the clustering river, bank, and bank deposit? No, it does no sense to disambiguation. So um, the bank and river bank and the bank and bank deposit would be considered the same token. Um, and then Nikolaj says the formula is for bigram models, right? Yeah. So you would want to, uh, you would probably actually want to add a third term here and here if you are doing a third word. So that is the, um, that's the general idea of the paper. And we're not actually going to implement it from scratch because I'm being efficient. Uh, and if you remember last time, we actually got it, uh, let's see, we actually got it working to import this brown clustering algorithm that we got on GitHub. So let me, uh, Oh my gosh. Let me open the GitHub real quick. I don't think there was a lot of documentation. Um, let's see, Laplace smoothing. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of documentation. Uh, it requires that you provide a list of sentences, which we can definitely do. Uh, and then smoothing and the bigram chunking will be applied as part of the algorithm, which is nice. Um, yeah, and the code will be released after November 25th. This was two years ago. The code has been released, um, but I don't think, excuse me, I don't think that there was a uh, uh, any example code tests demo. My test case. Okay, so there is a test case that we can uh, we can build on uh, to get this working. So I believe I made this utility script. So let's start a new kernel. Let's start a notebook. It'll take a minute. Uh, and I'm trying to think if there's anything I want to do here. It's in Python. I want it to be in Python. Oh, I do want to add a data set. Um, and we've been using, so for those of you that are just joining, um, the reason that I'm talking about unsupervised text methods lately is that, hey, I can't spell, um, is that I spend a lot of time every day reading the Kaggle forums, um, maybe between half an hour to 45 minutes. Uh, and that, that really adds up, uh, especially because we have an exponential rate of growth in people posting to the forums. So I want a way to sort of simplify that job and um, present a really quick summary of sort of the top line topics. 
in the uh, in the forums. Let's call this brown clustering uh, trial. And last week we were working on Yake, which is an unsupervised keyword extract. Well, oh, I haven't actually added it, have I? Uh, utility script. Yeah, so you can see I saved it as a utility script um, and I can add it. Uh, so last week we worked with uh, Yake, which is an unsupervised, unsupervised keyword extraction technique. Uh, and this week we're going to work with brown clusters. And I think I'm going to start by trying it just on the raw text and then try it on the uh, text that we extracted the, what was it, brown, brown clustering yuan, yang yuan. Woo. Um, and then try, and we also want pandas. Uh, and then try it on the clusters, the key extracted keywords. Sorry, I'm getting a little distracted. So the reason that I want to try it on raw text first is because um, it's designed to be used on raw text, but I think it might be informative to use it on the extracted keywords, understanding that because this is an n-gram model, it's going to treat keywords that are next to each other after extraction, uh, that relationship is very important, even if in the original text it wasn't very important. So we may get weird results working on the keywords. Uh, the benefit of using just the keywords is that the upper limit of the vocabulary size that they suggest using in this model, which again from, uh, da, da, da. I believe it was 50,000, but I don't, can't find it in here real quick. Um, again, this paper was written in 1992, so it's been around for a while. Um, but I believe that the maximum vocabulary size they uh, recommend for their specific greedy technique, sorry, not 50, 5,000. Um, so using the extracted keywords will help to reduce our total vocabulary size. Uh, vocabulary size. And hopefully that answers uh, the answers to life's question. Um, I want to try it first using just raw text, like the authors intended, uh, and then using the keyword extraction. I don't want to do keyword extraction after clustering because I don't think... So I guess what I could do is manually audit the clusters and pick the clusters that are most informative, but I want to avoid any sort of manual data cleaning processing step in this project because it's something that I'm going to have to rerun multiple times in, um, you know, whatever uh, time span I'm running the, uh, uh, the model in. So anyway, those are my thoughts so far. Uh, let's read in the data for... Um, Posts. Uh, <laughs> I know I can Python good. Don't look at me like that. I can Python okay. Uh, I know I am not the most uh, Pythonic of programmers. All right, so we're gonna read in our forum posts, and I believe last. Uh, I do want that, and I believe last time. We uh, did the pre-processing we would need in the Yake kernel to uh, get uh, a list of sentences from uh, our forum posts. Okay, no, the, this is a list of sentences, but it's a list of sentences um, where each sentence are the keywords extracted from a specific forum post. So that's not exactly... Uh, not exactly what I'm going for here. Uh, dear, uh, one or more deleted data sets. Oh, that's because I use the, uh, the meta Kaggle data set. And when we update it, we delete the old version, um, because it might have, uh, data that a user has since deleted in it. Um, and we of course want to comply with, uh, GDPR. All right. Oh, what was I doing? I want to get, I just could just come back to this, get forum, nope, get list from pandas series. 
series to list. Super easy. Okay, uh, so I should have here, and I read that already. So if we look at the first couple rows, you can see that we have the ID. So this is the ID of the specific post, the ID of the topic, uh, the user that posted it, the date they posted it. So you can see our data starts in 2010, um, whether or not it was a reply. And then the message is the part that we are really interested in. Uh, and then whether it has a medal and then when the date that medal was awarded. Um, so I think, well, let's try it with just part of the form first. So uh, take the message, nope, message, and then take the first hundred posts. All right, that looks good. And then turn that to list all underscore. Uh, and let's call this sample data. Uh, Christopher says you could probably call list on it. I think we've got what we want now. I think there's probably more of a delay because I did increase the, um, the streaming quality. Um, but I think this should work. Make sure that that is right. Uh, take first hundred forum posts. All right, um, now I need to go back to my example code here. So, okay, interesting. So this is tokenized, which I don't believe they said that you needed to have done. Okay, and it looks like, I don't know what six is here. Okay, I'm gonna copy this code. It's definitely not gonna work. I think I need to tokenize in addition to uh, putting it in a list. Let me double check what they said. Uh, provide a corpus is a list of sentences that are tokenized. That's not the, that's not the words that were, were said. Um, the answer to life says, I really don't get pandas. I tried like five times to get comfy with it over the years, but I don't, still don't have a clue 99% of the time. Um, have you used R much? Because pandas is basically a re-implementation of R and the data frame structure. Um, I find people who tend to find R and also pandas very intuitive right out of the box tend to be folks that have spent a lot of time working in Excel and other types of um, spreadsheet software. Uh, Year says brown clustering. Uh, and Nikolesh says use NLTK word underscore tokenize. I'm actually, I'm going to try it just uh, doing this first and see if it works. Okay, it did not. It did not. Corpus is not defined. Okay, where are you getting corpus from? Hmm. Object corpus not found. You're not going to take me to, okay, you're not going to take me to the LTK is used for n-gram. Where is corpus from? Where is this function from? Is it from corpus.py and I should have just, it's a class. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so I should have put this in my, whoop. Uh, my script as well. So let's edit this and copy this. And I believe, okay, and we hadn't imported n-grams either. Um, so this uh, script that I'm editing here is just basically me copying and pasting the um, relevant code from the GitHub repo in, and it is not the best organized, uh, but it should work. I don't know if you guys heard the heard the dog. There's a one of my neighbor's dogs has become uh, increasingly grumpy. Ooh. There we go. All right, so let's commit this. Um, 
and I don't actually know whether or not that will update this right away. I think this may be tied to a specific version, possibly. Mm. Oh, uh, Yer says, uh, type brown clustering in to see if there's a guide. Does the question mark go after? Not found. Okay, helpful. All right. Uh, I guess I'm just going to see reimporting and see if that works. I think I may have to detach and reattach. Yeah. Okay. So I think that this is um, a whoop, specific uh, version of the um, script once I've run it. So I need to, after recommitting the script, whoops, sorry, I made it big. After recommitting the script, I need to go in and re-add it again to get the new version. And this should work, hopefully. Uh, and so once we have reset everything, I will run top to bottom and uh, Hopefully it should help. Uh, Christopher says, you can't reach it. You didn't import everything. Okay. Oh, it's a namespace thing. Also, I don't think I had corpus in there. Um, yeah. Import. Uh, thank you. I had definitely failed to do that. Uh, all right, eh? okay, type error, uh, can only concatenate list, not string to list. Is this in Python too? Mm. Corpus M, no doc string, type, okay. Um, Corpus sample data, self unigrams, start simple plus sentence plus end symbol for gram in grams. Can only concatenate list, not string to list. All right, let's see. Uh, Yer says, would you try this method on tweets since they are far more short than posts? Um, it shouldn't matter, especially because it's just looking at whether words occur next to each other. Um, the only thing you'd get more of in tweets would be like end of string if you have a have a final um, uh, token that means that. Um, the line that raised the exception is, I believe, 568 here. Let me get rid of this. I don't need this anymore. Uh, grams equals n grams, start symbol plus sentence plus n symbol, two. Um, which, uh, the answer life says put the string in blah. So I think when he said that you want a um, list of sentences, he means that it should be tokenized. Um, and I believe somebody mentioned the syntax for uh, from MLTK import 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 word tokenize. Uh, and let's see. If that gives us the uh, thing we want. Excellent. Yeah, it does. Uh, oh, interesting. It looks like it has been concatenated a little bit. Maybe. I don't know what MCE bogus equals means. Um, that might just be a link. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it looks like we've got the raw HTML. So we might, we may want to, at some point in the future, do some... Um, data cleaning to remove the uh, HTML tags and whatnot, but we can uh, deal with that later. Uh, okay, this is list comprehension. I know this is a, like a clear place to use list comprehension. I've got a list of things and I wanna do this to each of the things in the list. Mm. Mm. 
At one point I could do this without Googling and then I forgot. Uh Extraction R I guess I can just loop. Um there are ways to remove that. Yeah, I, I'm i not too worried about it right now because it might actually be useful to know what HTML tags people are using. And we're pretty proactive about trying to get rid of spam, but I can imagine a spam category where the most distinctive cluster would be like HTTPS, or I mean HTTP, uh, ho, 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 depending on your uh, uh, the particular type of spam it is. Um, okay, I want to do this for all of these things in sample data. Oh, I can't do it. It's not going to be indexed automatically, is it? Um, Oh, thank you. Uh, the Answer Life and Christopher have both provided uh, snippets that hopefully should work. Um, word tokenize I for I in sample data. Let's call this sample data tokenized. And then Uh, let's look at the first two. I, okay, I think that's what uh, the format that we are uh, expecting. We are expecting that the uh, brown code is expecting. So let's see if this will work. And I'm not 100% sure what uh, this M here. So this particular argument is called M and I'm not 100% sure what it is does. Okay, so these must be as it's going through and it looks like this is going, okay, that's a clock. That's a clock. Uh, I don't know what this is. Is it like the the clusters it's making? Interesting. Okay, and then finally, the output is this is one cluster, I guess. So this is no. Okay, so it's giving us out all of the clusters here. So we have one any applied best deer. Interesting. These clusters don't look super helpful. Um, let's actually, here, let's get rid of this and let's collapse this guy so we don't have to look at it. Uh, and then, whoop. Okay, so these are clusters that are similar to I. Let's see some clusters that are similar to Kaggle. Nothing. Um, Interesting. Okay. <laughs> okay, what do we got? Uh, Emilard, ranks, train, vocabulary, codes, corpus, helper. Hmm. Let's just see what's in here. Okay, so it's just a class. Uh, here we were looking at corpus. Uh, let's see what's in the clustering thing itself. <clears throat> okay, so it's got vocabulary, merge arg max. So this is how we go through and we do the actual merging of the clusters based on um, uh, based on mutual information. Get similar. 
self.codes or intent. Okay, so what are these codes? Uh, for key value, temporary key. Okay, so I think what we have is a dictionary where each word has the code of the item that it's closest. Uh, so each word has the code of the item it is. So I think we have a dictionary with word cluster ID. Whew, can't talk good. All right. Okay. Okay. So that's that's a good sanity check. So that's the most common word in the English language, and it looks like it's been um, uh, clustered with words that are also um, mostly function words, except for zero centimeters for some reason. Uh, Nikolaj says, I think it's better you remove uh, links and tags from the data. Just remove all unnecessary data from the clusters. Um, I think that I will probably do that at a point in the future, but for right now, I am going to hang on to it again because I think that it might be helpful to have a cluster that is like, you know, links and like spam. Uh, not necessarily spam, but like links and, um, you know, bold. I think those might actually be useful and interesting features um, given what I know of the forms. And I could be wrong. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, okay. So. Okay, I was wrong. It is definitely not the cluster ID. It is, I'm uh, 1300, we had 100 posts. So this is probably the count. Hmm, but it's decreasing. Um, so this is lower. Huh. Interesting. Okay, so one thing that I do think I want to do is... Um, uh, make it lower cased because I think that that's giving us weird stuff. And I think I am going to strip um, punctuation specifically. Uh, I don't think I care about punctuation. So. Um, Yer says, cannot find what M means. In the thesis, they make reference to the set of elements. <sighs> yeah, but it seems to be a... Um, at least based on the example code that I had somewhere. This is something demo. Anyway, at least based on the sample code, they, um, let's see, and it was in tests and then it was in demo. Uh, so the sample that they show, they have it set to 0 0.001. Uh, sorry, in, in clustering, they have it set to six, which is, I guess, maybe like the, the, maybe it's like the number, minimum number of times a word needs to occur before being put in the, in the corpus, maybe? Um, yeah, it's a little bit hard to say. Uh, let's actually look at the source code for this and see if we can figure it out. Because if this is a, uh, uh, an important, um, if it's an important uh, parameter that we need to be tuning, I, I want to know what it is. I want to know what it do. Uh, so I think it was in core. All right, self.m equals m. Super helpful. <laughs> Where are you using m? Hmm. Nowhere? Maybe it does nothing? Do you guys see it? So it's just something that's like initialized and then not used afterwards? Weird. Okay, well, um, guess there's not much we can do about that. Uh, let's... Uh, let's 
remove punctuation. Actually, we probably want to do that before we tokenize. Or maybe we don't. Let's see. NLTK, remove punctuation. Da -da -da -da. Regex tokenizer. Oh, yeah, I think somebody uh, mentioned that. So since we're already, um, we already have NLTK as a dependency, I don't think it makes a big deal to add it. Uh, and then we should just be able to do two lower from there. So I'm using this tokenizer instead of that tokenizer. Uh, and then we are using tokenizer.tokenize instead of word tokenize. Oh, right. I should probably import it first, huh? All right. And now if we look at sample data tokenized, um, yeah, okay, so we've removed all of the punctuations, uh, and now I just want to do two lower. Da, 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 da. I think I can just do, is it two lower? Nope, oh, okay, maybe it isn't two lower. Um, uh, regex is another thing that sucks, and I tried to understand it 50 times as well. Uh, Chris Rast, if you could post in a code snippet with a link, let me get my phone up so I can approve the link. I should set this up before at this point, uh, just because I know folks are gonna gonna share helpful links. Whoop! Y'all don't need to hear that. Um, yeah, helpful. Oh, ooh, uh, Vladimir says M is top words for train. Top words for train. Like the, the minimum number of words in a cluster? I'm not, I, I'm sorry, I'm not, uh, I'm not really following what you mean. Uh, okay, can we just, I'm just gonna search uh, NLTK lower <laughs> case tokens. Yep, that's what I want. Uh, da, 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 da. You probably want to lowercase all your tokens first. Da, 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 da. Type dot raw. Dot text collocations. Oh, it's just dot lower. Okay, helpful. I don't know why I thought it was too lower. I think that's what it is in R. Oops, I think I hit refresh. Okay, oh, and uh, Nicholas says two lowercase. Okay, it's starting. I think I just refreshed the page. Um, should be no big, I'm sure my, my draft is saved. Uh, oh, interesting. That is an error I haven't seen before. You go back. An error occurred saving draft and able to uh, save draft while editors in 991 type event source. Okay. Oh, I can uh, I can make this bigger. Message thunk anonymous. Hmm. This seems like something it would be useful for the engineering team to have. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and send it to myself. All right, and it's still starting. Oh, send myself a little little error message. Boop. Oh, interesting. It didn't copy and paste all of the uh, uh, all of the error message. I want the whole thing. All of it. Interesting. Um, Nicolette says, I think you should lowercase the strings first. I think you're right in this particular um, example. Hmm. 
Interesting. Okay, I'm just going to refresh it again and see if that helps. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I just it just wanted to be refreshed one more time, I guess. Um, blah, 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 blah. And then the lower casing was, nope. Why did it work that time? Okay. Um, the thing I was looking for is this. There we go for W in tokens, except I actually want this. And let's run it from the top. I think there's a keyboard shortcut for that, but I don't remember what it is off the top of my hand, my head. It might be, uh, oh, okay. Okay, I think I actually need to do these backwards. I think when I take it into a list, it uh, won't allow me to do string operations on it like lower anymore. So now if we look at the, well, let's just look at the fifth one. Um, okay, yeah, you can see that everything is lower cased and we don't have any, um, we don't have any punctuation. Uh, and it looks like there are some things that might be parts of the links uh, and maybe tags as well. And we can deal with those later. Like I said, I think that they might be uh, informative for us later on. So let's try reclustering and see if that helps. Uh, and then this did take a while, uh, as uh, the authors originally mentioned. Uh, this doesn't—they don't recommend it past uh, five thousand vocabulary items, which I'm pretty sure we have more of. Three, six, one, six. Maybe they're trying to get to six out of six. That would make sense. No? I don't know. Interesting. Um, oh, Christopher says, do it before the tokenizing. Yeah. Uh, Nithyan says, is there somebody who does computer visions papers live coding? Oh, I'm sure there is. Um, interesting. Uh, so here we have a much different cluster for score. Interesting. I wouldn't expect a language in this cluster with and. Hmm. Do we have Kaggle? Okay. And this time it has a cluster for Kaggle. Interesting. Um, which includes things like links, which makes sense because people send links to Kaggle pages on Kaggle, um, which is to be expected. Um, Nicholas says, I still don't get what all those timestamps are. I think it's just like letting us know every time it does uh, a clustering round. Uh, so it might be, hmm. Yeah, I don't know what the what this uh, tuple tuple is, uh, but I think this is just, oh, maybe, maybe um, this here is the round in which this word was assigned to this cluster. Maybe. Uh, interesting. So here's one cluster, family size, text, length, face, NS. Um, so I think these are uh, HTML tags, which is good. We want them to be a specific family, so that's nice. Um, this looks to be just like words that mean things, the cluster. So not super helpful. And it also includes um, a lot of numbers. Maybe not the most helpful cluster. And if we keep going up. Okay, so this is the, this looks like the entire vocabulary. Um, all right, so this doesn't look to be super duper helpful for um, that. And actually, I think I can also, yeah, I want to hide the output so you don't have to see that in the final notebook. Um, Let's see, people, what do people talk about with error? So what I'm getting so far is that this may not actually be the best thing to HTTP. Yeah, this isn't a super informative cluster. Um, I might be able to get better results if I just futz with it for a little bit. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, the Insta Life says, this class sucks. Who makes a library with no doc string? In their defense, I don't think it's a full-blown library. I think it's just someone's, like, uh, little example code piece that they did. Um, this isn't on, on PyPI. It's, it looks like it was something maybe for, for a class. So I'm grateful they made their code available. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a full-blown library. Um... Nicholas says, you need to do more pre-processing. I feel that it doesn't help that much. Uh, we could. One thing that I think might also be helpful is to try this on our um, Yake output. Um, Universal Genevieve says, sorry, a bit late to the party. Is there a way I can get a quick, dirty explanation on what brown clustering is supposed to do? So brown clustering is an n-gram based model, in this case, bigrams, um, that assigns words to clusters based on how high their mutual information is. So how likely they are to occur with each other. Um, and words are much more likely to be in a cluster if they're more likely to occur with each other than they are independently. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's try this with our uh, yake output and see if that's a little bit more helpful. I feel like it might be. I feel like it might be much nicer, actually. Uh, so here is our yake example. So the first thing we're going to have to do is... Actually, uh, let me commit this and then... Uh, uh, we'll have a version to come back to. And I can keep working while it's committing because it's actually committing in a completely different virtual machine. So the keywords themselves, uh, the keyword extraction itself is a form of pre-processing and also sort of dimensionality reduction where we only get very informative um, words, which I feel like might, uh, might end up being a little bit better for this particular, uh, oh, 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 this is not going to work until I turn on the internet. Um, because it needs to, to have access to uh, the internet to go download the thing from GitHub. All right. Um, and we should have an output here that we can use as the input to our uh, brown clustering. Do, do, do. Code here. Uh, Sample posts, form posts. Did I call this form posts again? I did call it form posts again. Uh, and then let's just run this top to bottom. So this should get me a list of sentences where each sentence is the keywords that we extracted from a specific form post. Uh, and I think we have an example here. Um, so here are the um, keywords from a form post, chess matrix, metrics implementation, chess metrics, benchmark, chess metrics, metrics implementation, metrics benchmark, chef, Jeff, metrics submitted my chess benchmark score, slightly better score, score is worse metric score than chess submitted implementation, slightly worse benchmark my score. So those are the keywords. Um, the answer life says, what if you perform brown on n-grams and weight like blue? I guess you could, but it would take a bit of futzing that I'm not really not really willing to do. I don't want to do something that's too weird and custom because again, I'm going to have to rerun this every day, and I also want it to make something make it something that someone else could use fairly easily off the shelf. Um, uh, AI or maybe Al says why Python implementation only because a lot of these things were your options are Python or Java, and I don't want to use Java. <laughs> Um, a lot of these things haven't been implemented in R, as far as I know. Uh, Nicholas says, I'd like to see it be, using, be used on tweets. It would probably work similar to the toucan algorithm. Not super familiar with that. Um, question, is there a different stream chat? Not seeing the questions being responded to. Um, yes, so I'm looking at the chat on Twitch and also on the um, YouTube live stream on the Kaggle channel. And I try to be pretty responsive to, to both of them. Uh, all right. So we've already, so we need to do the tokenizer. We also need to make everything lowercase. So let's do that. Um, except we're going to do it with sample posts. 
All right, let's do that. Uh, and let's actually, I believe we did the first 100 last time. So let's do uh, 100 again here. And I remember from last week that this was pretty fast and didn't take too, too long. Yeah. All right. Was that an error or just like a, it's done? All right, and then let's look at sample data tokenized, and let's look at the first five. Nope, first five, there we go. Right, yeah, okay. Uh, so actually the thing that we should have been doing this on is sentences. I was like, this doesn't have the keywords extracted. I don't get it. It's because I just did it on the raw text instead of the sentence text. There we go. This looks like things. Um, so here we have maths, Eurovision, Eurovision voting, href blank, bogus, BBC, Eurovision. Obviously they're talking about Eurovision. Um, it looks like here's another one where they're talking about Eurovision voting patterns, shifting patterns, voting alliances, Eurovision contest. Um, okay, so this looks much better. And now let's try this as the input into our clustering. Yum, 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 yum. And see if that works. Uh, and presumably it should take less time because there's fewer total words and this is going to scale with the number of words in your, oh wow, that was much faster. Uh, this should scale with the number of words in your vocabulary. And if we try, beep, bloop, 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 uh, let's try this Kaggle one and this error one again, because last time it was super uninformative and this time, okay. Okay, I'm, I'm much happier with these. So open set, question, patience, and data, paper, data set, limited by. So I think these are all from a specific Kaggle post uh, or so around more of a, one of the earlier competitions because these are uh, posts from farther away. Here we have two score of glyco based system post and rating. I don't know what glyco is. Oh, interesting. Uh, so it's a system of determining someone's rating in Go. So presumably somebody found an error in the, the rating system. Um, Christopher says, I'm trying to publish a Kaggle kernel, but it doesn't render. It shows me a JSON thingy. Oh, so you will only see the complete version after you hit commit. Um, so it sounds like it could be committing uh, if you haven't hit commit yet, it'll show up that way. Um, and also all the code has to run through top to bottom. So if it's something that takes a while to run, um, you'll just see like the weird JSON until it's done, done running and you see all the output. Uh, Nikolaj says, patients must be related to the patient's data set. That's awesome. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, let's try it with using the keyword extraction definitely got me better results. Um, so let's try it with um, is there any way to take a slice from the end? I think that's just an R thing. Um, uh, cause I want like the thousand most recent forum posts. Uh, Python pandas slice from end. Uh, Slicing, excluding the end. Yeah, that's what I want. Pew, pew, pew. Okay, so I should be able to do dot tail and then the number that I want. And I want a thousand. Actually, I'm gonna try this. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna try this in another cell before I run this whole cell. Make sure it worked good. And I just want two here. Uh, and actually I just want to make sure those are the last two and those are from the sixth. I think it's been a while since this, uh, since we've updated it maybe. Anyway, all right, let's try it out. Attribute error, no. Float object has no attribute replace. Text, text replace, extract keywords. Okay, what's different here? Uh, Nicholas says negative 1000, negative uh, index. So let's try that 
and see if that works. And oh, actually, I want the slice. Should take a little bit longer because we're doing keyword extraction on what, 10 times as many posts? Um, oh, nope, error. Float object has no attribute replace. Hmm. All right, Google, help me out. Da da da. Data frame series. Float object has no attribute replace. Um, Interesting. So I'm wondering if they're one of the um, forum posts is just like 100 or something. Um, so it's just a number. Uh, so let's try the, this and see if that works. What was it? Two string? As string? Blah, 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 blah. As type string. Let's see if that works. Christopher says, reverse the list and get the first 1,000. Do reverse list. Wouldn't that be, um, so I'm, I'm responding to, to Christopher saying reverse list. Wouldn't that be pretty computationally intensive? Uh, and then Nicholas says, I think we can use as type. Uh, there's, a, there's obviously a little bit of lag on the, uh, on the chat. It's thanking. Uh, so hopefully once that's done, we can see some helpful clusters. Um, so this one looks like it's around family, internet, money, performance captures. So the clusters are still a little big. I would prefer smaller, more homogenized clusters. I wonder if this is like the amount of information gain you need. Like this is the measure of amount of information gain you want to increase by before you change your, um, uh, you done? Nope, still thinking. Um, I wonder if this is the amount of information gain your clusters need to your clusters need to improve by in order to be assigned to a new cluster. If that makes sense, that's sort of like the threshold. Um, that might be part of it because these are these are pretty big clusters, and I would like maybe. Uh, oh, it's still thinking. Hmm. Hmm, I wonder if converting, I think I might have done this bad. I think maybe I should convert each post to a string. I think converting the whole thing to a string means it's trying to do keyword extraction over the entire document instead of each document separately, um, which is what I want. So let's see if this works and gets rid of that error. String has no object as type. Ugh, this is a good place for testing and asserts and, uh... Oh, it's a much bigger slice than I thought. Okay, um, so Christopher says, what I was doing previously is I was slicing forward until it reaches the 10,000 element from the end. Uh, I want to slice from the 10,000 elements to the, sorry, the thousandth elements from the end to the end. Um, so I had it backwards, which means that it was looking at like 4 million things, which is probably why, as type, string. is that not how you do as type? Did I type it bad? No, it's definitely as type. All right, uh, so let's try this and see if this works. So this should be far fewer things, so it shouldn't take quite as long. Uh, Nicholas said, it would be nice if you could limit the number of tokens um, in each cluster or set the threshold of mutual information. Yeah, which I'm wondering, so there's two um, parameters in this code that I don't know what they are. And one is, oh no, well, one is closing my window. Uh, no, one is, 
have you saved my state? You have, excellent. Uh, so we'll just run from here. Um, so one is the one that's in the clustering here, which in the example was set to six, and I don't know what that means. And the other one was in the creation of the corpus um, and was set to 0 0.001, and I also don't know what that means. Um, but we could check out the corpus code and see what it's doing. And I believe that function was right at the end here. Uh, self corpus alpha uh, by default is one. And in this example, it is set to be 0 0.001. So it's much smaller than the default. That might be the threshold. Let's see, where is alpha being used? Nowhere. What? Start saying for sentence and corpus for words and sentence and gram for grams and sums and bigrams. Okay. So this is creating the corpus. Laplace smoothing. Oh, okay. So this is for um, for smoothing, which is helpful, but not really what I want to be uh, futzing with at the moment. Um, Nicholas says, does that mean that there are only six clusters? Yeah, that is a good question. It might be self corpus M, but I, I remember we tried to find where else they use M and we couldn't find it for word and self vocabulary. So it should start with the same number of clusters as items in the vocabulary. Oops, sorry, made a big. Um, all right, excellent. This time it worked. Uh, tokenize. So we're going to try clustering again. So we should start with the same number of clusters as we have items in the vocabulary. And then we rank vocabulary sorted. Okay, so this must be sorted by the amount of usage, I'm guessing. Um, Vladimir says, to clarify what is brown clustering M, see optimi optimization using a fixed window size. We fix a window size W and put each of the W most frequent words in its own cluster, um, is implemented in train self method of brown clustering.poor. M affects complexity. Um, so, okay, so this the, the time complexity is um, vocabulary times uh, M squared plus N where so I'm assuming V is the number of vocabulary, N is the number of clusters maybe? So I guess M is how much time we are willing to spend on it. Hey, okay, 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 okay. I'm really happy with that cluster, sorry. Um, the, the thing was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm really happy with these clusters. So this one, uh, the cluster for Kaggle, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so for both of these, we're getting the closest 10 words. I wonder if that's just, uh, just a coincidence. Excuse me, uh, let's try deadline. Submission find, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, um, so we are getting just the top ten most related words, it looks like. Or maybe each cluster is ten words, um, but that seems a little bit um, interesting. Score files model pseudo, pseudo deadline, I guess. Uh, team, these look, um, from what I know of the Kaggle forum, super coherent. Um, and I'm pleased with that. Um, Yeah, let's see what happens. So here's the one for deadline. Let's see what happens if we do submission, if we get the same cluster. Submission, because I am suddenly worried that we're not actually going to get the same cluster. We are not. Okay, so this is the most related X words. It is not the cluster containing this word. Um, mm, that's unfortunate. And this must be a measure of mutual information because it's different here and here. 
Um, so here, the mutual information between time and deadline is 12.34. Here, the mutual information between time and submission is 12.44. Um, which makes sense because as I remember, the um, weights we were getting for um, specifically the function words was much lower, like it was like 10 or something, which makes sense because you're going to have less mutual information with function words because they occur with many different words. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this as it stands. Um, I'm going to commit this now that we've got it working. Um, my problem now is interpretability um, and measuring and summarizing models as, sorry, models, modeling forum posts as clusters. So I'm not entirely sure what type of data structure the clusters are being scored in, and I'm not entirely sure how easy it's going to be to get out coherent clusters from this that we could then as humans look at and understand the topic of. Um, but I think we made pretty good progress today. Um, definitely the keyword extraction and then clustering worked really good. I was a little bit worried because the keyword extraction um, reduces the sort of informativeness of the engrams um, and that was not a problem. So really nice sort of two for dimensionality reduction and also uh, pre-processing technique. Um, I, I've i been really, really happy um, with Yake. The, the author actually emailed me and was like, hey, I'm so glad you're using it. Um, it was 10 out of 10, big fan. Um, and it looks like the brown clustering is doing okay. Um, I'm gonna play around with it a little bit either on stream or if I have time um, on my own time and see if I can get to the point where I am really happy with the clusters as topic models. And that might take a little bit of work. Um, I also want to try other types of clustering. And I think I'm going to be doing, um, you know, clusters to, sorry, um, keyword extraction, embedding those, either using pre-trained embeddings or training my own embeddings, and then using that for clustering. Um, probably using um, hierarchical D, what's it called? Oh, it's, it's the, the one that everyone said to use, um, or UMAP, one of those two. But I think we made really good progress today. Uh, I'm gonna call it a day because I have a meeting coming up that I should be at. Um, and thanks for joining everybody. I hope you found this helpful and not too frustrating. Uh, and I will see you next Friday and we will continue plug it away at this unsupervised text classification problem. All right, uh, enjoy your weekend and I will see you. Oh, wait, I, there's some questions. Um, da, da, da. Uh, Nicholas says, so they're not in the same cluster. How are they listing the top 10 for different works? Does each word have a similarity index for each other word in the corpus of words? So I think it's the top 10 most similar from within a cluster um, would be my, my guess, but all right. Thanks for joining. I will see you guys on Wednesday for paper reading or next Friday for the other thing. Um, this one, live coding. Right. Talk to you then. Bye.